guys, today we're taking a look at the McFarlane DC Direct Page Punchers Black Manta. Let's get a better look at that packaging, shall we? We get a nice close-up look at the packaging right here. Of course, DC Black Manta. Exclusive com English comic. 12 plus. DC Direct. McFarlane Toys right there. DC Direct still lives on. Page Punchers. On the back, we've got Black Manta, of course, with his variant cover from the Aquaman comic included. Of course, various languages, page punchers, McFarlane Toys social medias right there. And of course, we have Black Manta from Aquaman comic. And then, of course, featuring the little sticker, page punchers right there. Up at the top, we've got McFarlane Toys, Page Punchers, and then on the bottom, we of course have Aquaman Legalese, and then of course, the barcode for all you barcode hunters out there. All right, let's get this dude out of the packaging. And here we have Black Manta out of the packaging. And before we take a look at the figure and the accessories he comes with, we're of course going to take a look at everything that comes with a normal Page Punchers figure. So first off, we're going to take a look at, you guessed it, the Hockey Puck with the DC logo right there, one peg right there, and then we've got the four circles right there. Great stuff from the, <laughs> the stand making department. And then of course we have this awesome card, which has is the cover of the actual comic because they have variant covers for each figure, which really makes each figure unique and just doesn't make you want to throw out a comic book. But yeah, I've got Black Manta right there. And then on the other side, it says his name is David Hyde and he's one of Aquaman's greatest enemies. But what the card refuses to leave out is the fact that I'm pretty sure this origin might have been um, retconned by now, but to my understanding, the reason why Black Manta hates Aquaman so much is that Aquaman killed his father, and Black Manta is on a quest for revenge, and he'll do anything necessary, including destroying an entire civilization in Atlantis. So there's that going for him. But overall, not bad uh, bio on the card. And then we, of course, have the comic, which has this beautiful illustration of Black Manta on the front of the book. And then he's also the main villain of the piece, at least from what I understand. I haven't read it yet. I'm planning on to reading it pretty soon, but it looks like a pretty action-packed read, so I'm excited to dive into that. And so now we get to, of course, the figure, which he comes with three accessories. He comes with two removable blades, as seen here. I love the uh, metallic paints on the blades and looks really cool. It's the, how they um, go in are very Star Wars inspired, very Black Series inspired. So I'll demonstrate that later. And then he's also got, let me turn off the turntable. He's also got this trident spear looking thing. And of course I dropped it. But here is the spear. And it's very techno, futuristic -y, Atlantean kind of tech. It looks really cool. I love the blade over here. It's very razor and it's it's very kind of like 90s, like kind of radical kind of blade. But it looks very cool and very fitting of an Aquaman comic. A lot of those blades get really weird really fast. But it's a good kind of weird, you know. It's not like the terrible kind of weird. And then of course we have a lot of black plastic for the rest of it, including some like wires and stuff like that. Hints of red right there to go with the suit and stuff like that. And then we have, of course, the handles for him either holding it right here or right down there. And then of course we have a spiked thing at the end for more dynamic posing. And then I'll show you how the blades work. So, as you can see on this one, I don't have a blade inserted. 
you of course just stick the blade, blade first, up there. It's a bit finicky, but just like that, it's in. And now you got a dual blade wielding Black Manta. But I'll take out I'll take out the blades for the course of the review, just so I don't get hindered talking about the figure. But in all seriousness, guys, this figure is awesome. I love this figure. It is so cool. The amount of like dex textures and designs are just through the roof. Like, I'm just going to do a head-to-toe, like, so we're going to look at the helmet first. And obviously, the helmet looks great straight out of the books, even though you can't really tell how there is a actual head under there. But, yeah, the head looks great. And then it has a similar system to, like, how it is in Young Justice, where it's, like, part of the head's down here and part of the head's up there, and they use all of these flaps kind of go back and, yeah... There's that kind of dynamic right there. And then just tons of little machinery detailing, like how the athletic wear is very durable. And, and then we've got all of these metal components right here with the red energy highlights right there. Got, of course, the chest armor, which comes to a nice point right there. Makes it very aerodynamic for swimming, of course. Same as the other side. Gauntlets look pretty dope. Even though they don't rotate, which is such a bummer. Cause you can't really um you can't really for you can't really um force the blades to move into the direction of the hand. They stay stationary. Well like as I was doing earlier in the review, you could see that my hand was kinda my arm was kinda like this and the blade was still kind of like that, you know? My blade You see if I can line this up. My blade was like that, and but my arm, but my hand was facing him. So there's that kind of problem right there. Some glove rotation would have been nice on this figure. I can give, I can say that. And also, I get the gripping hand and the closed fisted because the closed fist does a really good job for the blades. But at the same time. We should have came with alternate hands, so if you want him to two-hand the spear, he could. Because I think that's essential, especially if you're going to include a spear like this. You need to have him two-hand, especially if there are if there is room for that. I think it's essential that you make the figure be able to hold it at any at all the places at the same time. It's just my little thing, but it is what it is. And then of course on the back we've got the oxygen tank, and then also the jet boosters for of course swimming in the water because he's not Atlantean. It's very much a survival suit, which looks really cool. And then of course we've got nice red energy right there, down to the boots, and just littered with the with this awesome like scalier texturing throughout it just looks oh it looks so good and then also this kind of lined texturing compared to like the more dotted texturing just they went above and beyond with this figure and there's also texturing on the bottom of the boots right there and on the feet as well you can really see the wetsuit compared to the actual like armor pieces. And then you have also these ar this armored piece on the back with additional boosters from the looks of it, just smaller, that don't have paint, but that's not too big of a deal for me. It is noticeable though. But yeah, they went above and beyond with the wetsuit texturing and detail of the whole armor. He just looks very, he just has that badassery power, you know? He just looks great. I absolutely am astonished with how much detail they packed into this figure. Just above and beyond. 
and it, and it doesn't look carried away like the ocean master of this wave or especially that aquaman that's the reason why i didn't pick up those two is because they don't look they they look like it's too much and i like a more hybridization of realism and classic like that jay garrick which i was just floored by but anyway texture talk out of the way let's do articulation so he has a ball jointed head which moves great he can move left and right and he does have tubes on the back of his head so be aware of that so he can't go 360 unless if you want to break those tubes then by all means but if you don't he can go about he can look completely to the right and completely to the left without straining the tubes. So it's not that hindered, but just be aware that those tubes are there. And then we also have the hinge shoulders with the armor plates that are attached at the bicep, so no hindrance there. And we've also got the butterfly joint in there moving nice and freely. And then we, of course, have 360 motion in the pin. We have bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, which look pretty good. This looks great. This looks, this looks uh, like a step in the right direction, McFarlane. Looks like a step in the right direction for sure. Looks great on all fronts. And then we also have the classic, what was also on that... Uh, Aqua, Aqualad figure where we've got the um, roll of the dice hinge and then you can move it and then you also have the hinges but it works it works better than on that Aqualad figure because you can't really see it because it's got this gauntlet in the way so you don't really have that issue with uh, Calder where you have to have the hinge a certain way in order for it to look flesh with the rest of the hand but besides that great sculpting on on that front and then we of course have the diaphragm which moves incredibly and you can he can move that far back which is incredible for swimming poses like just look at that it that looks great and then you can he can crunch about that far which is again incredible and then of course Pivot side to side. I think he, I think he has the best um, diaphragm I think I've ever seen in this line so far. Like, man, he has such good diaphragm rotation. It's insane. But anyway, we have the standard McFarlane hips right here. So you get a nice good look at the legs. He can move about that far forward that far back he has thigh pivot right there which offers a lot of rotation compared to some figures but still not a lot asking for more come on todd give it to us and then we also have double jointed knees right there which look really good because there's the armor piece right there so it's covering up everything right there i wish that we were tech that the joints were textured throughout but still it is what it is i'm not going to bother it because of how much texturing is on this thing anyway and then of course we have the standard mcfarlane um at least the newly improved ankle joints where you can hinge it up and down you can grab the top of it and actually rotate the ankle and then at the bottom you have nice ankle pivot right there and then of course we have toe articulation to round out the articulation on this guy and here is black manta right here next to his son which we just looked at in the previous review and these guys look great together i don't see an issue with putting these guys side by side the only problem is this guy hates this guy's guts and black manta doesn't really care he's kind of a douche here is black manta next to all of the atlanteans i currently have and he looks great with either one of these. Like he especially looks good with Calder since they were made in mind with being the same wave and everything. But he looks good standing next to Aquaman as well. 
you know, and he also looks good standing next to Ocean Master. So overall, very good character to just put in your shelf if you don't want to get the whole wave. It's not really a problem putting these different kind of characters from different waves and stuff like that with, of course, improvements because Black Manta is definitely a lot more um, realistically textured than something like Aquaman or Ocean Master, but he can still fit in with no problem at all. Here we are with Black Manta with some Legion of Doom characters. We of course have Grodd right here in Justice Grodd. We have Lex Luthor with the custom Kryptonite Lance right there. And of course we have three Jokers, Joker right there. And oh, what a lineup right here. What a lineup. These guys look so good together. It's literally insane how awesome they look and it's just ugh it really makes you want some um some more legion of doom characters to really fill out these guys they just look great together absolutely fantastic but yeah guys that'll do it for this review on black manta i absolutely adore this figure like you can tell when i like truly am in love with a figure where i just can't stop moving it around and talking about all the nitty gritties of it. And there are some where it's just like, ah, oh, geez. Like, but this one definitely is without a doubt, like, he's a 10 out of 10. He's not 10 out of 10. He's, he's a nine because of like the problems I have with like the gauntlets not rotating. And of course the not inclusion of multiple hands for, of, of course, dual, uh, two-handing the spear but outside of that like he's a solid 9 out of 10 actually probably 9.5 to be honest like he is incredible he is one of my favorite figures that I've gotten this year so far if not my favorite he is just an incredible piece and like I just remember like doing some up uh, doing some of the um shorts that you guys will see later I just couldn't put this figure down. I was just constantly like moving him around and seeing what I could do. But overall, I love this figure. Absolutely fantastic. Of course, if you want a Legion of Doom setup, you gotta get him. If you want just a villain setup in general, you gotta get him. I deem him an essential grab from the McFarlane line. Even though he does come with a comic book, I know some people aren't really on that whole comic book thing and I understand that but I think just getting this dope figure more than compensates for like getting a comic book that you don't really want but yeah that's it for this review like comment subscribe all that good stuff tell me what you think of the figure after the video and as always guys uh keep collecting and uh, be kind to everybody and I'll catch you in the next video Peace.